So I wasn't expecting that we would get set four reveals this early, but apparently season four of Overdress card reveals is upon us, and the first couple of cards are looking pretty interesting. Hey Carfathers, welcome back to another Carfath update and today it's Tuesday which means another Tuesday livestream reveal and this time we've got the very first set 4 reveals or at the very least I think this is the first cards for set 4 and if not, well this is the first batch of reveals for set 4 but on top of that we also got some more information for set 4 and onwards because we also had the international conference for Booster Road products which is basically the English version of the biannual or quarter annual product reveal that we see in Japan but this but then basically rehashing the same information with some extra tidbits that exclusive to the English side and one of those information is kind of surprising and very interesting for the future prospect of cards because what they revealed is that from set 4 and onwards we're going to get English exclusive cards but they're not specifically what you're thinking of as so far they revealed that we're basically gonna get cards that we already got in the original prints but then with different names or different artworks and i think this is basically to give a different flavor to the english product and give some more goodies to us international players but at the same time if we read the lower script of this image they also state illustrations may be featured in other editions one year after initial release in the english edition so basically it's very likely that we get these world premieres and then a year later we're gonna get them once again in the regular product that's also then Japan get access to. But overall basically means we're gonna get exclusive artworks. Now the question is will it mean that the English sets is gonna get bigger because we're gonna get the regular cards plus these world original cards or does it mean that these world original cards will replace other cards that were for the Japanese edition of the box. So does it mean that certain cards will come with different artworks than what we saw for Japanese product version. We have to wait and see until we get the final conclusion of set 4 because this is where we're going to see the first introduction of these world original cards and then we can compare the Japanese version of DBT-04 with the English version of DBT-04 as well. But besides that we also of course got some new cards and we got some new cards for Brandgate and more specifically for the Gravidia ride line as we got some new Meteor cards. And we're going to start off with the new Meteor order which is Falling Hell Hazard. And this grade 2 Meteor Order is of course a set order, but it also has the effect continuous when you would count the number of Meteorite cards put from your order zone into your drop for the cost of your Vanguard abilities, this card counts as two cards. So effectively it's a double Meteor, which is nice because this means you can somewhat play with less Meteors than the 16 that we had access to in set 3. Now, keep in mind, this is a different meteor of the other meteor so you can play 16 of that and 4 of this because this has a maximum of 4 as there is no extra skill that allows you to run multiple copies of this card. Are you gonna do that? No, you're probably not gonna do that because 16 is already stretching it very thin but what this card allows you to do now is instead of running 12 of that and 4 of this you can potentially run 8 of the other order and 4 of this and still have basically 16 meteors access to your card pool. From my understanding this basically interacts the same way with all the other skills as the original meteor as this is still considered a meteor card. I could be wrong on that front but I believe it basically interacts the same way as the other grade 1 order card. Overall this allows you to open up more room for your other cards and basically make the deck more aggressive with actual units. But on top of that this card also has another effect which is auto when this card is put into your drop zone from your order zone, bound this card, choose one of your opponent's rearguards and retire it. So this is basically the same effect as the grade 1 order, only the difference is that you need to bind this. This does have some implication with cards that interact with meteors in your drop zone, but overall open up the deck space for multiple actual cards. Might be worth it to actually running this card besides of course losing the draw and soul charge effect of the other meteor. Now beyond the meteor we also got actual unit cards and one of those cards being this grade 2 Graffitia Sergo and Sergo has the effect 
Act on the regular circle. Once a turn, cost Soul Blast 2. Choose up to 5 Meteor cards from your drop, return them to your deck, and shuffle it. If you return 1 or more cards, until the end of turn, this unit gets power plus 5k. If you return 3 or more cards, it gets power plus 5k. And if you return 5 cards, it gets power plus 5k. Okay, so basically it gets either plus 5, plus 10, or plus 15, so it can become a 15k, 20k, or 25k beater. Overall, the power isn't really the main selling point of this card, if I'm going to be very honest. It's nice, it's an, a nice added bonus, especially in consideration of the doubling of triggers, as well as the potential over trigger coming into play here. But I think the more value behind this card... It's the fact that you can shuffle back those meteors back into your deck. And that is yet another skill that allows you to potentially lower the amount of meteors in your deck as you can still actively get them into your order zone and reuse them over and over again. And it shuffles back five cards in your deck, thus somewhat negating deck out as an issue as well because that can also definitely become an issue at some point. So this is a nice way to basically open up the deck space, also increase the consistency of your engine, being able to not run out of fuel as fast as you used to do without this card so i think overall this is a very good card it can definitely be either a tech choice or potentially a solid staple in the three to four of range depending on how the deck is going to shape up after set four but beyond that we also got another offensive tool that is in the likes of this great free which is gravidia baku birito and birito has the effect although when it's used placed on the regular circle costs soul blast one Choose a Meteor card from your drop and put it into your order zone. So unlike the Grade 2 that we just talked about that shuffles it back into the deck, this immediately replaced into your order zone, which is nice because that basically reloads your next Vanguard ability immediately, which can be great, but at the same time it doesn't fill your deck. So if you're running low on fuel, this can be a bit scary, but it can definitely work in your favor if you need Meteors on this go right now. And this allows you to get that. But what this card also allows you to do is once again add more power onto the board or more pressure because it has also the ability continues a rearguard circle during a turn if your opponent's rearguard is retired this turn this unit gets power plus 5k so it becomes an 18k beater but then also and if three or more were retired critical plus one so it can become an 18k beater double critical now overall that doesn't sound all too amazing but keep in mind it's free and we also get a meteor back into the order zone which can fuel our engine but what's more importantly here is that this puts more pressure behind gravidia's free attacks because gravidia is a free attack deck so to compensate that you either need to multi-tag but she cannot do that or you need to get another way to make those attack matters and criticals is a good way to do that and with gravidia already getting double trigger value if you're gonna unload five meteors this is another way to get more value or more pressure behind that and with the over trigger also being able to double up on your criticals and power this is another way to actually benefit from that because the problem with the brand get over trigger is that you can double the power and double the critical but if the units on the board aren't really of decent numbers doubling up the power doesn't really amount to much but having this grade 3 and the grade 2 that can already increase their base power to sizable numbers and in some extent even get a critical then being able to double up on those numbers then it actually makes the brand gate over trigger actually matter besides just the 100 million power and then we can see a situation where we aren't as dependent on getting 5 o meteorites into the drop zone every single turn because maybe getting going for free meteorites already does the trick because we already get enough power and crits on the board there once we hit a crit or an over trigger it's already enough and we don't need to double up on trigger value to actually get the value that we need and that combined with the fact that we can potentially now lower the amount of meteorites in our deck thus opening up space for actual units thus increasing the pressure in the early to mid game can make the deck probably run a bit more smoothly than just the generic otk play where you just want to stock up on meteorites get through the double trigger and hope you're going to trigger a couple of times that will deal the death blow against your opponent now we can actually see a dedicated game plan that doesn't necessarily rely on that and could potentially use the meteorites just for pinpoint removal and potentially interact with certain skills like the grade 2 and the grade 3 that we just saw in this new support wave but that's all the reveals that we got today i think the brand gate deck for Gravidia is looking a bit more interesting and potentially also more 
fleshed out as it doesn't really look like a super gimmicky play out of set three, which is great. And another positive aspect that comes into play here is that because we can potentially lower the amount of meter rush that we need to play, it also lessens the burden of set 3 with the lack of the amount of meteorites being printed in the singular case because we know that there is a, a lack of meteorites in the card pool for players thus making the deck almost impossible to build for everybody or it gets a bit too expensive and now having a different meteorite that substitutes at 2 thus replacing or lowering the need of the original meteor or the card makes a deck potentially more buildable from set 4 and onwards but I hope we might see a reprint of the original Meteor or something else that replace it so we aren't less dependent on the particular card as yeah that Meteor being is a short printed card in a 16 copies per deck situation isn't all too pretty but hopefully this new support wave might lessen the burden on that particular card and that whole short printing but we have to wait and see until we get the whole card pool and we can understand how the future variant of the deck is going to shape up after set four but with that said let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of these new cards also what are your thoughts about these world original cards are you excited about the prospect of original artworks or do you think it doesn't really change all too much let me know all your thoughts in the comment section down below as always this video has been brought to you by lovely page runs over patreon.com slash freaking insider you guys are amazing if you want to support the channel or everything that's happening on the channel you can simply go to patreon.com slash freaking insider and become a patron today but with that said i've missed the time leap see you guys in the next one